position. The house party? Ah, I guess so. Huh? Yeah. Looking, looking for the low, low ceiling <laughs> for the music playing. My name is uh, Dwayne Mincy. I'm Lauren Mincy's dad. We're here for the team dinner tonight. You know, for the, get ready for that big game for Ruckus tomorrow. We'll get that win. You know, I think it's always special when you can take players back home and for us to be able to take Lauren back after five years, everything that she's been through, uh, to be able to go back with all of her family and friends, her high school coach was there, her assistant coaches, uh, um, some of the, the guys uh, from the fire department came in. And um, so, you know, that moment uh, for Lauren and her parents and, and just all the people that have impacted her life, uh, we, we love being able to go back and, and do those kind of things for our players. It's a pleasure having a home, definitely having all her teammates here. I'm, I think I'm more happy than anybody else just to have all the coaches, the kids. I love them. I love the team. I love the coaches. It's a good feel. Oh, yeah, I can't have this. Oh, yeah, when I asked Mincy what she told me, uh, Dad, no, no, uh, no candy, none of the stuff that you usually cook, no written all that bad stuff, no starches. I said, all right, what can y'all eat? Chicken, barbed potatoes, and rice. She sounded like she was disappointed. <laughs> but it worked out. <laughs> Gotta go look at the truck, baby. Yo, that's crazy. You gonna start it up? I was just playing a crochet, you know, my job. I've been doing it for 25 years. I'm almost done. It's a great career. I love my job. And just like I was telling the crochet, it's just like anything else. It's demanding, it's dangerous, but you gotta watch what you do. That's all. Hey, this dope right here. I was telling uh I was telling Libby, my grandfather that passed away a long ago. Uh, he retired as a fireman. Oh, okay. And he was one of the first black firemen in North Carolina. Oh, wait, wait. The what's first black fire station. And uh, Winston Salem, North Carolina. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, I've never been around a fire truck. Though. Really? You know what I mean? So this is cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shay was like a kid in a candy store uh, being able to, to go to, into the, the fire truck. Uh, he got to sound the horn and uh, see all the gadgets and uh, I think he was really reliving you know, his, his years. Maybe he wanted to be a firefighter back in the day. So um, just uh, you know, really, really cool that uh, it, you know, he was afforded that opportunity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my backup career, firefighter. <laughs> you gonna switch? <laughs> yeah, switch up, baby. So I was just laughing at Coach Shea. You know, it doesn't matter what age you are, you get in that fire truck, you're gonna act like a little kid. You're gonna act like you're five. And that's just what Coach Shea did. <laughs> What's what's picture? <laughs> well, we have the eighth grade graduation picture. I'm pretty sure I just got my braces off um, a couple of months before that, so I was really excited about that. Pretty didn't I didn't change much since then. Um, what else do we have in here? We have we have we have prom, it's a little prom photo, you know. Got to get classy sometimes. Classy sometimes. Uh, most of this other stuff is from AU in high school. Most of this is from my sophomore year in high school when we played against Scholar Diggins um, at Ball State. Uh, got a couple of candid shots of uh, my championship team from 2008. We won the group state championship. Um, we have that right there, which is from the Rise magazine that I was in. Uh, after we won a TLC my freshman year. Um, and then over here, we have my jersey that was retired from university. I think I was one of the first people to have their jersey retired there, so um, that's really sentimental to me. Um, and that's pretty much it. I chill in here, this is my room to relax. I watch TVs, movies. Um, it just gives me an area to reflect. Next card, Ace of Club. <laughs> Next card, Jack of Diamond. This game is rigged. Next card. Next card. Ten of Club. I got it, I got it, I got it. 
Next card. You might have Pekino. Pekino, there we go. We have a winner there. It feels good to bring them about my environment, a place that I call home and feel comfortable in. Um, glad that everybody enjoyed the food um, and the atmosphere is really great. It's really exciting, especially since a lot of people haven't been able to come down and see me at Maryland. Um, I know a lot of my family members and friends, they, they're working, um, they're at school, so they haven't had the opportunity to come to me play, so I'm really excited about the game tomorrow. Hey, good luck, good ride back. Oh, yeah, see you guys at the game. Yeah, we at the game tomorrow, guys. Good luck to you. Thanks for everything. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, it was awesome. Thanks for hosting us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When you go on the road, you have to be a team, right? When you go on the road, you have to be a team. And you've seen that unfold when you went to Nebraska, when you went to Minnesota. You have to have a team united when you go on the road. And as we're a team, we, we, we will achieve more tonight. You've got to understand, you can't have a moment tonight defensively where you jog back in trans D or three-quarter speed. If you do, you're hurting your team tonight. This game is about who's going to be the better team tonight, defense, rebounding and offense. Defense and rebounding is going to win this game. You go out and you show Rutgers what it looks like to be a team. You go out and you show Rutgers what it looks like. Here we go. Bang, bang. That's what should we be doing tonight. Bang, bang. You got to be ready to defend, rebound, press break. All right? Defend, rebound, press break. Stay together. 40 great minutes of Maryland basketball. Let's go. Here we go. Hey, together on three. One, two, three. Together. Just really, really proud uh, of our team. I mean, uh, this game was a battle. Um, obviously, extremely physical. Um, two aggressive teams that uh, had to battle back and forth in terms of a game of runs. But um, love the fact that we were able to keep our poise and our composure, and um, really there late in the second half, be able to extend our lead um, to be able to help us through a lot of adversity, foul trouble. Um, you know, just big plays by each and every one of our players, and um, couldn't be any more proud for Lauren Mincy to bring her back home, uh, her five years, the, you know, um, what she's had to fight through and, and adversity and to be able to come in and um, have a game like she did tonight for us. Um, obviously, I wasn't expecting to play here when I first committed to Maryland. Um, unfortunately, I went down with an ACL um, and it gave me an extra year and we end up having a, a home and away with Rucker, so I couldn't wait to, to play here. It felt really good, um, obviously, coming in here, having my family. Um, friends, uh, old coaches and teammates here supporting me. Um, I knew that my teammates were co going to come in and fight for me all night, and luckily we came out with the one. Lexi, was this the most physical game you played in the Big Ten so far, you think? Yeah, definitely. I mean, when we went on our run for Rutgers, they decided to turn up their uh, intensity and aggressiveness, so I was proud of us. I mean, we did get that one intentional foul, but I'm glad we didn't retaliate, you know, because that's just not how we play. So we kept our uh, composure and our poise and handled their aggressiveness. Hey! Hey! Fight! 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 They gonna get you! If anything, it brought us closer together. Like we know, like on the like, it was an away game. So we, I mean, we we just came together. Oh, well, they're playing dirty now. Yeah, yeah right, right. And that brought us even closer together because we knew it wasn't going to be easy. They weren't going to start fighting. I mean, uh, see Vivian Stringer. She was not going to let her team go out without a fight. And that, and we knew that. So that, that's what brought us, brought us closer together.
how special does that feel to come home, okay, to, to be able to, to come in your backyard and, and like we were talking about, man, you've had five years, right? You chose your school and, and through highs and lows, you know, you chose your school and you stuck through it through good times, bad times, tough times. You deserve a night like tonight. Absolutely. Because of your character, right? Right? And, and what I loved seeing was each and every one of you, the unselfishness. I mean, I, just watching your display, you guys are like, here you go, Mince, here you go, Mince. Like, just understanding, you know, that, that it does. It, it takes a team. <laughs> great, great. That's my niece. Ever since she was a little girl, I knew she had a special gift, and um, hopefully it continues. Oh, mama, make sure you get a good one. Mama, auntie. Mama, auntie. Mama, auntie. Mama got my auntie video. The game was awesome. 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 It was definitely awesome. I prayed on it. I said, yes. Let her knees remain healthy. <laughs> She's the number one in our family. And I said, go out there and get yours, Lauren. Do it for your little brother, because he's playing too. <laughs> was fun. Yeah, Michigan State, they were a good team. The game felt a lot closer than it was. I looked up at the score and we were up like 20 and I was like, wow. Um, I thought everybody played really well, uh, especially Kiara, who's sitting over there. We've been trying to get Kiara to play like that for a while. You know, she kills us in practice. You know, scout team Kiara, man. She's a force to be reckoned with. I think she had that scout team jersey on underneath her real jersey tonight, but um, you know, she got out in transition. She's so fast, incredible athlete. So, you know, I just got to throw the ball up to her and she went and, went and got it. And I was proud of how she played today, even though she fouled out. That's the next step for Kira, no fouls, but hopefully she takes this game and builds onto it because we're going to need her later in the season. I think my teammates definitely had confidence in me. They've been instilling, it, instilling confidence in me during practice, telling me that I can knock down shots, and when I shoot, have confidence, so I'll make it in the game. Melina's doing a hell of a job, guys, where she's just ducking in, burying people. We gotta give her catches. Um, we focused really hard on getting the ball on the inside, and then during the game, my teammates, they gave me a lot of confidence. They passed me the ball, um, and I finished, so that was really good. <laughs> I mean, going in like the same as Rutgers, we knew they were going to fight. Um, and Coach Chen sent us an email saying how, actually an article of Michigan State, how they only have seven players and they just want to fight from, from here on out. That's all I mean. They have seven players, they're not going to give up. Uh, being that they have people out with the flu and uh, injuries. So we knew that we had to come in ready to play. So, I mean, at this point, anybody can win on any given night. I think a couple of things. I think we have to play harder and we have to play smarter. Okay, I, I don't think we did either in the first half. Every time we made a play that was not a smart play, what they do? They, they make you pay. All right, but but again, understand. You know, I thought what Brene did defensively. She came in. She was on two. She kind of buzzed around there and dug off a dribble. That's good to do. You know how many shots two has? None. All right, zero for two. You got to understand. We got to play a hell of a lot smarter. A hell of a lot smarter in terms of what we're doing. We got to rebound the basketball. They're gonna compete, guys. They want to compete. They want to win. They're one. In, they're one and six in the conference. They were saying the only way we're gonna get back in it is to fight. We got to fight our way back into this game. That was the last thing I heard walking into the locker room. We've got to fight. I don't see us fighting right now. Last time I checked, we've worked too hard to let teams come in and have any kind of momentum. You've got to find somewhere inside that this game matters more to you today than it does for Michigan State. Every game matters. And a great point. When we communicate, the beautiful things happen on the court. All right, phenomenal job. If you're not communicating to be able to get that, we got to keep going, keep attacking, getting anything easy. All right.
Hey, that's a really good strategy by you sitting close to coach so you can get in the game if we get the fifth ball. It's just about getting in. I'm impressed. I mean, that's that's what I would want to do if I wanted to get back in. I'm impressed. Well, Coach B tried to make it seem like I just wanted to get in the game when I always sit next to Coach Langley. But uh, yeah, she. I mean, she asked. She said she knew Alexis was gonna get her fifth foul, so she was asking who would, who would want to go in, and I and I wanted to go in, so I did sit close to the front to go in. I said she got the favorite seat because she went the closest. Teacher's pet. Well, Shatori, Shatori like plays like she needs a lot of height sometimes. So she caught the ball in the post. She didn't want to make that post move, but she heard all of us like, Tori, do it. Do it, Tori. Post her up, post her up. So she did it, you know. Aerial power, she just wants to block everything. So Tori got it with that up and under, and we went crazy. She did not just do that. Um, but yeah, the, the last play. Um, Coach always expresses like versatility. And when Alexis came out, we I'm pretty sure we had four guards in. So and I pro, being one of the oldest, I went down the at the four spot because we had other two other freshmen in. So I just posted it up and <laughs> And, and, gave, uh, and took what she gave me. But, you know, being on the bench and having fun like that for everyone that's on the floor and having fun on the floor, you know, it sucks the life out of other teams. So when, we, when we're having fun, we're, we're a dominating team. You're going to be last. You're like always waiting on me. No, you get game goals. Can, can you, like, one job. One job, one job. One job. Making him nervous. Game goes. Here we go. I'll start with the positive. I mean, obviously, I, I thought we had great chemistry today. Like, it was fun to feel your energy and, and your unselfishness and making plays for each other. And I think, as you see that on the offensive end, things came really easy. Nice job. Baby, up three, one, two, three. Family. Family. Great job. All right, my name's uh, Dustin Daly. I'm a ex-football player here, now working as a scout player for the women's basketball team. I played football for two years. It was uh, my sophomore and junior year. Uh, transferred from uh, Lewis and Clark College in Oregon. It was last spring. I just made the transition to play wide receiver from playing quarterback. Uh, I took uh, a first concussion around the middle of the spring ball. Uh, came back a little, you know, real quick, trying to you know get a spot, and um, got another concussion. This one, I kind of lost consciousness for a little bit. Uh, the rehab and stuff, post-concussion stuff was rough and uh, just kind of talked with my family and you know, decided one more year wasn't worth it. It was rough, it was real emotional. Uh, you know, I grew up in Texas as a, like a culture, so you know, dad played football in Texas, had a you know, shot with the Cowboys, my uncle played football, you know, everyone you know, played football, so you know, letting it go was real rough and uh, kind of wanted to fill the hole, you know, and I never thought I'd find anything, but, you know, this is kind of making the transition easier. Dustin has been great for the program just because of his sacrifice. I mean, the guy, you know, played, I think it was Division Two, II, Division Three ball, and, you know, had then got here to Maryland and suffered the concussions, and uh, he comes in and he goes hard, and he's a true example of perseverance. You know, I don't care what happens along the way, you know, I'm going to have an impact and I'm going to, you know, help pull others and help make others great regardless of what happened to me. He's been a great addition. Um, and his, his, like for example, he came back from Christmas break and landed and just beelined straight to practice just to be in with the scout team, you know, because he wanted, he wanted to be here to help out for that, for that first conference game. So, I mean, he, he's huge and a true testament to, like I said, to, to perseverance. You know. The cool thing about Dustin, he was already fired up when he got here to work with women's basketball, and and that's really cool coming from someone who was on the football team. He, you know, football teams are always kind of seen as the the big men on campus, the most popular team, and just to see how fired up he was to help out our team was awesome. You know, with, with all the coaches, you know, like Coach Freeze, Coach Lane, Coach Shen, Coach Shea, you know, the transition was really easy. They're real supportive and. Uh, you know, they're making me like a better basketball player, which I know it's kind of weird to say being a scout player, but I never would have, you know, I don't understand the game as well. 
working with them makes me understand it, and it's uh, you know it's a nice feeling knowing like I'm helping out. You know, of last Final Four team, you know I've always supported them. Well, women play rough. I mean, a lot of people don't think so, but they're these girls are some of the toughest girls I've ever played against or seen. Those guys, I mean, you got to be thankful and appreciative because they don't get a whole lot, um, and they basically volunteer their time to come in and just help us be better. You know, to mimic. The, the teams that we're going up against, the player tendencies, what they run. So they dedicate a lot of time. Um, sometimes, you know, in situations, we make sure uh, pretty much on a daily basis. Sometimes it may feel like it's a little a thankless job sometimes, but I mean, I know Coach Freeze goes out of her way to make those guys feel, you know, welcomed and, and, and appreciated you know, for all of the efforts that they bring every day in practice. And uh, we wouldn't be who we are without them, I mean, playing something. Here it's just one big family, you know, with, you know, they're very welcoming. You, you know, they want to know your story. They want to know why, want to, you know, make sure everyone knows why you're doing it and you feel, and they appreciate you for doing, you know, making the sacrifice to come out here when you really don't have to. And, um, you know, I could imagine, this is another extended family. You know, I was joking around with Sean and them, you know, saying I got to see my extended family before I go home to, you know, spend holidays with my family. So, it's, you know, it's the same thing, real, real welcoming, like a warm family is all it is.